There were four very interesting mantle cell presentations. The, the first one is the follow-up of the, uh, the LESAR study, the French study. So this was frontline uh, younger patients with mantle cell treated with four cycles of DHAP transplant and then a randomization to rituximab maintenance or not. Steve Leguil has presented that study on a number of occasions showing a very significant progression-free survival advantage in favour of the rituximab arm. Yesterday he presented longer follow-up which shows an overall survival advantage. So you actually live longer if you use rituximab maintenance. In the UK we can do that and I think that should just be adopted as a standard. We, we can use rituximab as uh, maintenance following frontline therapy. That's, that's the wording so I think very, that should just be adopted as a standard. Uh, the other interesting thing from a rituximab point of view, the, the Nordic group um, have for many years used rituximab in a targeted reinduction way, if you like. So they, they, they measure MRD uh, by blood and bone marrow for up to five years after their patients had the transplant. And if they become MRD positive, they give them four doses of rituximab. Most then go back to MRD negative, and the time from giving the rituximab to clinical relapse is years, it's four and a half years. So that's, that's a very important uh, study. Of course, what we don't know is if you don't treat them when they're MRD positive, how long it takes them to become clinically, uh, the disease comes back clinically. So you don't really know if that's a massive difference over what would be if you, if you left them alone. You've got to believe it does make a difference. So that's interesting. Uh, MRD isn't prime time yet, uh, it's only within clinical trials and I think, I think we're going to be using MRD to, to um, affect therapy in the future as we get a bit more evidence. So that's, that's something for the future I guess. The other thing we saw uh, yesterday were the first trials of combinations of abrutinib. Um, so in the relapse setting the Nordic group showed lenalidomide, rituximab, uh, ibrutinib in relapsed mantle cell lymphoma, very well tolerated, high complete remission rates are much higher than you see with the brutinib, higher than you see with the brutinib rituximab. So that clearly a, a good combination. 50 patients treated, uh, relatively short follow-up, but that looks that looks good. But perhaps the most important one was Michael Wang showing his trial. Now Michael's doing what we're doing in the UK. So he's giving a brutinib rituximab frontline, but what he's doing is when the patients have uh, gone into a complete remission, he's then giving them high dose, well, he's giving them high perceva, intensive chemotherapy. Which seems slightly counterintuitive from my perspective, although those are young patients, so I suppose he's consolidating that response with things he knows work. In the UK, our frontline study is for older patients, so that's a brutinib rituximab versus chemo rituximab. So this provides very good reassurance that that's a good way to treat people because what he showed yesterday was that if you use a brutinib rituximab frontline, 100% of patients respond. Everybody responds. And uh, the majority of those get a complete response. That's in young people, we'd imagine it be exactly the same in older people. So that, that really makes us very confident that the trial we've got running is, is, is really uh, a good one. So um, from a patient perspective, get yourself in that trial. <laughs> It's randomised, of course, so you, you could get chemotherapy, which is standard of care anyway, or you could get a brutinib rituximab. And of course, the way things are funded in the UK, if you have the chemotherapy first, you'll be able to get a brutinib second. So, you, you know, you are going to get access to that drug. Frontline may or may not be a better place to get it.